Hey everybody, it's Andy. Great to be back with you. Get in, say hi. Thursday Live Office Hours. Great to have you. I see a whole bunch of you in the chat. Good to be back. Had a little trip to celebrate my wife's birthday. Got to meet a whole bunch of Mile Walk Academy members. It was great to see you. Glad you made it and to say hello with me in Clearwater. But get in, say hi. Uh, I got a little lesson today. On uh, It's kind of a lesson how to... Uh, a little bit more of maybe of a, of a pep talk about your job searches and your careers. I'm going to share a little bit of what's going on in my life. I got a bunch of time for your Q&A, so get in, say hi. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you need. Put some question marks in front of your questions. I'm going to just take the questions in order as I see them. So great to have you. So welcome to my show where I help you build a career you love. And today I'm going to be talking about how my Ironman training and the lessons that I'm learning from that training can really help you in your career and in your job search. Now, if you don't know this, I, uh, I wanted to uh, start competing in triathlons. If you don't know what an Ironman is, it is a very long, uh, quite insanely long <laughs> swim, bike, run combination. And uh, so I, I decided that I wanted to, to do these things. And I'm a, a pretty good runner and a pretty good biker. I'm sure I could be better at everything. But one of the areas that I knew I absolutely needed to be better at was swimming. And I, while I'm not a god-awful swimmer and we never say bad things to ourselves about ourselves, as in I'm a developing swimmer, I was smart enough to enlist uh, a coach, Coach Kip, who's a great dude. Maybe he's watching. I don't know. But... I got, I got with a coach, and I, I, uh, he's going to be my Ironman coach, and I, I said to him, listen, b- before we get into all this stuff and stringing this all together, I need, I need some swimming lessons because you know, I'm a decent swimmer, but this is nothing like you know, swimming in a pool where you got no waves, you got the nice ropes and the painted blue line on the bottom where you can see where you're going and you're in the lane by yourself. I mean, you think about swimming over a couple of miles in the open wavy water with sun and wind, not to mention all the other nuts that are out there doing this that are kicking you in the head, not on purpose, but this stuff happens. You gotta know where you're going. You gotta know how to do this effectively. So I said, let's go and I I, I want an infusion of some swimming lessons and I'll do the work. You just teach me. Let's go back to the beginning. So he says, "Great." So a couple months ago, we 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 met at at the pool, and he said, "You know, bring you know, bring your goggles and bring your cap, and and I need you to bring a snorkel and some fins," which I did. And it had been a while since I uh, I had snorkeled, and it's not like the snorkel that you use when you when you actually go snorkeling in the ocean or when you dive, where you get the little you know the the little snorkel out the side of your head. This you know this is a swimming snorkel, so you can do drills. So you, you, you put it in your mouth and it kind of goes over your head so that you can keep your whole body in the water. And what that does is it helps you get used to being in the proper position without having to worry about things like breathing. And breathing is one of the most difficult things in swimming because you know, for my whole life and then of course your whole life and even if you played sports just like me, I played sports my whole life, I run, I bike, I do those things to this very day. But, you know, most of us, we breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth, or maybe we breathe in through our nose and a little through our mouth, and then we breathe out, and we can breathe out through both. In the water, you don't, it doesn't work that way. When your head's in the water, you breathe out through your nose and your mouth, and then you turn your head to the side, and you breathe in th- only through your mouth. So it's not a breathing, natural breathing pattern that a lot of people understand. So to not worry about that, we start to, to use the, the snorkel. So I, I get in the pool. He says, okay, here's what I want you to do. And I want you to you know just glide across, swim the length of the pool and come back and don't use your arms and put them at your side and just get in the right body position. That's all I want you to do. So I get in the pool. I got the snorkel on. I start to go out about, I don't know, 10, 20 feet. And all of a sudden I take a breath because that's what I'm so used to doing right through my nose. And I get all this water up my nose. And if you've ever had water up your nose, you know, how painful and and uncomfortable it is not to mention I didn't expect it so I was startled so coach Kip says okay Andy well you know what just just concentrate don't breathe in through your nose keep keep going keep going go down the end of the pool come back so I get going again I make it another 20 or 30 feet and sure enough I lose concentration I take another I take another you know swig full of water right up into my nose I stop 
said a bunch of four letter words, but I know that I signed up for this. This this is something that I invited into my life because I wanted to take a challenge and as soon as you take a challenge and as soon as you want to try something or as soon as you want to be better at something, you are inviting problems and challenges and things you're going to need to overcome. So I kept going. I come, I'm halfway back. I get water up my nose. Finally, Coach Kit, I don't know what was going through his head, but he says, okay, Andy, hold on. Get Here, get to the end of the pool. He goes over to the locker. He gets me a nose clip. I'm thinking, oh, geez. He says, at least this way we can get through the lesson today. And, you, you know, you put the, the, the nose clip on and you won't have to worry about breathing through your nose because you won't be able to. And at least then I can teach you what I need to teach you. So I go through the lesson. We finish up. I make it through unscathed. A little bit of a bruised ego. But on I go to my first practice by myself and I use the nose clip. I go back to my second practice. I decide that... You know, I don't want to use the nose clip. I've got to figure out a way to overcome this. So I'm going to concentrate really hard and I'm going to go and I'm going to swim. Without the nose clip, I get halfway down the pool and all of a sudden I get water on my nose. Same thing. Same kind of thing happens. I get back to the other end and I said to myself, I'm going about this the wrong way. Every time I get water up my nose, I'm completely startled, which makes me stop, which I'm not going to be able to do. So I need to start getting used to the fact that this could happen, and obviously I want to prevent this from happening at all, but the first thing that I need to know is it's going to happen occasionally. It happens to the best swimmers in the world. So I said, I'm going to make water get up my nose on purpose. So I'll swim down, swim down the, you know, halfway down the pool lane. It's 25 yards. I'll swim a dozen or 13 yards, and then I will, on purpose, I will take a, br- a breath th- through my nose and get water in it so that I know it's coming, I know it's gonna be uncomfortable, and then I'll fix it right away. So I did that, I got water on my nose, and then I just blew it out, and out it went, and I just kept swimming. So you do this a couple times, and then I'm halfway back on the the next length of the pool, I did the same thing, but I never stopped, and I blew the water out. And then I went back, and I blew the water out, and I blew the water out, and all of a sudden, after about, I don't know, three laps or so, I wasn't getting water up my nose anymore. And why am I telling you this? Because if you think about everything that you've invited in your life, what are you what are you ultimately doing every time that you take on any challenge, right? I want you to do this. I need you to do this to grow. I need you to create obstacles in your life. We're going to talk about the obstacles we've created for you. I may be put them in front of you, but you put them in 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 front of you for yourself, for your growth. But I want you to create obstacles. That is ultimately what life is all about, right? Taking on new challenges, creating these problems for ourselves. And why do we want to do this? It's the only way to get better. It's the only way to experience it. It's the only way to overcome it. It's the only way to grow. So I want you to think about that, that whether you are searching for your next job, whether it was your own choice or someone else's, regardless of of that case, You've got these obstacles in front of you. You want to grow in your career? You've got these obstacles in front of you. So I want you to think about how do I create them, identify them, and anticipate them so I can learn from them and grow from them. I want to give you a great example. And by the way, this is kind of a dual thing because I want to give you a mini introduction here to our newest Mile Walk Academy member. Yesterday, we had uh, somebody start with us. Uh, you're going to be hearing more and more about her in the upcoming weeks. Her name's Stacy. She's going to be helping me and Kara uh, build out our community. More great things for you guys. More great things on the YouTube channel. More great things in the LinkedIn group. More great things in the Facebook group and a whole bunch of other places through social media and a number of other things. And as we were talking yesterday about our strategy and the things we were going to do and she's going to develop this and look at what we do, take a diagnostic, see how we can get better and all that good stuff. And one of the things I asked her to include in her assessment was what are all the problems we have now invited into our life on purpose? I mean this in a good way so that we can get better, so that we can spend more time with them, so that we can service them better, so that we can be more engaged, we can be more helpful, we can be all these things. But every time we want to grow, we're adding problems. Well, if I have to spend more time with you to do that, to better service you, that creates a problem, right? If if there are more people and we grow, that actually creates a service problem. It creates a policing problem and all that good stuff. So you get where I'm going with this, right? So think about that. Now, we... Uh, we, we talked to you a week or two ago, if you, di- you didn't see this, I just spent five days with you on a challenge, 
uh, for your job search. The job search challenge, maybe you caught it, hopefully you did. If you didn't, there is a video on my YouTube channel that you can watch. It's not five days and nine hours worth of free coaching, but it is a half an hour in taking you through how I want you to more effectively take on this challenge for your job search. But this is anything. I want you to take more challenges in your life and I want you to, when you take them, no, go in that I am looking to fail because I'm going to hurry up and fail so that I can learn and, and grow from it. If you embrace the failure and you fail at the right things and you fail more often than everybody else is going to do, you're going to, you're going to build better response skills. You're, you're also going to build conditioning skills where you will not care as much about the outcome. Sure, you'll want great things to happen, but it won't hurt you as much as it probably has in the, in, in the past. I want you to think about this. I was thinking about this as I was prepping this talk about how everything that we do in our lives is like buying a ticket to a haunted house, right? We actually were foolish enough to buy these tickets to go to a haunted house where the sole purpose is to get scared, right? We know that something's going to happen and the first time we walk down the hallway and the boogeyman jumps out of that door, it shocks us. It surprises us, just like when I got water up my nose. But what happens the next time we go through that haunted house? It's not nearly as fun because we know the boogeyman's jumping out that door. So I'm not going to be scared, right? What do we do? We go buy a ticket to another house or we, we want to go on a different day when, when the setup is different. But I want you to think about that. So so let's talk about, let's talk about you. We talked about your job search challenge. And for those of you that, that didn't go through the challenge with me, there's a number of things that you need, you need to do, but you're gonna take on this challenge where you're gonna identify three companies a day, you're gonna identify three people, at each, one at each of those companies, and you're gonna send three messages out there into the world. You have invited the fact that you need, you, whether it was thrust on you or not, you've got this challenge, there's obstacles in front of you, maybe they're your own choosing, maybe somebody else put you in this position, regardless, you've got these obstacles. Well, I want you to get in there, right? I want you to send those messages and what's going to happen? The faster you do that, you know there are going to be problems. I've already told you what the problems are. They're not going to respond to you. Right? You need to figure out how to overcome that. They're going to tell you that we're not hiring right now. Thank you for the email anyway. Right? They're going to tell you to go put it in the applicant tracking system. Well, they don't, you don't hear from them? Follow up seven days. They tell you we're not hiring right now? I gave you the template for that. Okay, thank you very much. So on and so forth. Can I network? And so on. Hey, put it in the ATS. Great, I will do that. And can you tell me who I need to follow up with? And so forth. You spend a week doing this stuff? In a week, you're going to know all the problems you're already going to encounter and you're going to have the templated response and the skills to overcome them every single time. Now, you might not know what's coming back from any message that you send, but you sure as heck are going to know how to immediately respond to it and you're not going to be too scared or startled when it happens, right? It's not like getting water up your nose the first time, right? You might not, you might be uncomfortable when somebody says, well, you know, I don't know why you sent this to me. I'm not the right person. Right, but you gotta get in there and you gotta and you gotta do it. Here's another thing. All successful people know this. All successful people live this way. They live this way. Each day, each day is your game. Okay? My Iron Man event is not my game. The minute I cross it, that's not my game. That's not the end. The, the, when you get your job, that's not the that's not the end all be all. That's not the that's not the game. When you finish that that big project at work, that's not the game. Right? When you hang up the we're open sign on your business, that's not the game. Right? The game is lived in each day. It's lived in the practice. So when when Coach Kip says, you gotta swim fifteen hundred yards this way, my game is to do what he says and do it well and concentrate the whole time. Right? When you send an email I gave you, there's nine things you got to do in the job search challenge. So it's not just that each day and each practice is a game, but there's a game within a game because each play, each step, each email, everything has its own little game in it. And then there's the improvement from how you observe what you're going through at any moment in time and how that will live with you forever. Forever. Let me tell you, let me tell you about a couple things here. I don't know if you know who Nick Saban is. He is uh, arguably the greatest college football coach of all time. It's not really worth arguing. He's certainly one of the best. 
and he right now is the coach of Alabama, the university. They were playing New Mexico State, which is not nearly as good a team as Alabama is, earlier this year, probably about maybe three months ago or so. It was one of the early games. And I, uh, I didn't watch the game, but I, I caught this on, on the news, on SportsCenter or something like that. And his team was up 62 to 10, 62 to 10 by 52 points. There was eight seconds left in the game. And his team was on defense and and he was on the sidelines screaming at his team, holding up his hand, yelling five, five, five. And he wasn't calling out number five. He was actually yelling the defensive formation. He wanted them to be in a nickel coverage. And it doesn't matter if you know what that is. The point was they were not in it and they were not listening to him and they were not paying attention. So what did he do? He called a timeout. He called a timeout. It's 52. He's got a 52 point lead, eight seconds. Why? You might think that's nuts. I don't because that play in that formation will never be lived again, ever. So he wanted to make sure that they did it right and he caught it on film. He could use it for educational purposes. He could learn from it. He could teach them or the incoming freshman next year or whatever it might be. But they were not paying attention. They were not paying attention. So every single thing that you do, every single email that you send, pay attention to what comes back. We're talking about more, more about this in a second. But that's it's vital. Let me tell you about bubbles. So I don't want you to just think about these things that are uncomfortable to you, a la the job search challenge, where you're trying to reach out to people in, in hopes of them helping you get your next job. It's a fairly uncomfortable act. But I would argue that it's a skill that if you develop and take the time now while you're repping it like heck, that you will grow your networking skills. So I'm in the pool, right? I'm swimming. I get to the point where I'm not getting water up my nose. I'm making sure that my breathing is better. And, and while, while my initial breaths might probably be a little bit more violent than they need to be, I continue to study the best triathlete swimmers and the best Olympic swimmers. And I noticed when I would watch them on film, when I can see them underwater, that I noticed that they had like tiny little bubbles coming out of their nose. So it wasn't a violent push. It was like these tiny little bubbles. And I thought, geez, that looks cool. But you know what? I bet they're not doing that because it looks cool. I bet there's a reason. So I go and I want to find, I go and I research and I want to find out the reason why they they constantly have bubbles coming out of their nose. And the reason that it is, is because it helps them stay buoyed on the top of the water where there's the least resistance, which makes them go the fastest. Now, that only might add fractions of seconds or a few seconds or whatever. But have you ever seen an Olympic swimming match? where the woman touches the wall one hundredth of a second faster than the next woman, and that's the difference between gold and silver and bronze, and a mere second is the difference between not meddling. I'll take that hundredth of a second. I'll take that tenth of a second. I'll take that one second, five seconds, or whatever I can get. This job search challenge that you're going through right now where you're sending these three messages a day, what if when you get your job, you continued to send one a week. That's 50 messages a year. What if you made it your goal to send messages each week until you got a response, right? Maybe you got to send 75, maybe 100, right? Think about how you can make every little thing that you do a super skill, right? It doesn't have to be a detriment. So, so think about that. Think about that. You'll build the responsive, you'll build the response skills, you build the lifelong skills and all that good stuff. And the other thing that I want you to think about is each little failure along the way matters. And some failures matter more than others. I got done saying a few minutes ago that I want you to fail at the right things and I want you to fail more often. Right? What's what's the right and wrong things? As you go through your job search challenge, what did I tell you you don't get any points for? You don't get any points for putting your resume into an applicant tracking system unless you were instructed to do so. So th- let's think about this. I think sending messages, targeted emails to people is a great way to get your next job. Statistically, it's proven better. Everybody is getting a better skill who's, who's doing this and, and, and has this infusion of emails going out. And they're getting better at it, they're getting more comfortable at it, and they're getting more traction. And I have stats that prove that that's a better route to go. Now, they're developing a skill if they're taking the time to be conscious of it. And that's a path of high resistance and high reward. 
What about the applicant tracking system? You can sit in the comfort of your own home and you can you can put, you know, while it's a little tedious to put your resume information and your cover letter and your name and all that good stuff into an applicant tracking system, it's really not that resistant, right? It's low level of resistance, which is why there is a low level of success rate and a low level of reward in it. That's what I'm talking about. And and, and and there are a lot of you that are out there and, and I want you to, to, to go easy on yourself. If you know you're feeling beaten up because you've been failing at putting your resume in the applicant tracking system, and I'm telling you, that's not even failing. That's almost complete indifference because your resume is not getting seen. I would rather you be engaging with people. It's gonna take you further if you fail at the right things. Every day is your game. Every day, every email, every step you take, everything you do. Okay, and here's here's the last thing I want to cover with you. I'm giving you permission. I want to make you aware, but I want to let you know it's okay because I know a lot of you are afraid to do this. But I need you to be willing to get hurt and learn from it. Okay, it's about putting yourself out there, being vulnerable, and I'm telling you that you do this and great reward comes. Yes, I understand that sending an email to somebody who rejects you doesn't feel good. It's an unpleasant act. But I would posit that you are not actually personally being rejected. You can interpret it that way if you'd like, but I would rather you say, I'm just experiencing a feeling of disappointment. It's gonna be fleeting, but I'm recognizing that I put myself out there, I made myself vulnerable, I knew this was a possibility, I'm now it's my job to learn from it, grow from it, and overcome it. And I guarantee that, that you will, you will overcome it. I, I, I guarantee you, you go in with that mentality, you're, you're not just gonna get over it, you're gonna, you're gonna thrive from it. And I also think that the only way for you to do that is actually to take a step back, recognize and reflect and be, be conscious of it. You've got, you've got to be conscious of it that that's what you did because when you're conscious of it, you can step back, you can actually see what happens, you can record what happens, you can, you can look at it and analyze and you can learn from it and grow from it instead of shrinking from it. And if you go into all these endeavors that you're gonna undertake, whether it's your job search, your career development, opening up a business, whatever it is that you're gonna do, what, write a book, whatever it is you're gonna try, shoot a video, if you have that mindset, where I am gonna create the challenge, I am gonna anticipate, identify and anticipate the problems, I'm gonna to prep to overcome them in a, in a positive way, not a self-fulfilling prophecy kind of way, and I will learn from it and grow from it. I guarantee you that's what'll happen, just like when I got water on my nose. All right, so I hope that serves you. I, I, I really, I, I wanted to share that story with you. I thought about this a couple months ago. I knew there was a lesson in it, and I'm finally getting around to giving it to you. So I hope that helps you. I uh, I got a few quick announcements, and uh, and then I want to go to the I want to go to the chat. But great to have everybody. I uh, I don't know how many of you are actually here. 121. That's great stuff. Mm. So quick thing. Uh, Stacy Gilmore is our new uh, digital marketing director. So she's going to be helping us with a lot of the community stuff. You'll see her name. Um, I probably send you all an email about her, and I'll also uh, let you know some some things that that she and I and Kara will be doing for you. But you probably see her in the Facebook group and in the LinkedIn group. And if you're connected with her, give her a big congratulations. Uh, actually, true truth be told, uh, she is a boot camper, and she is in my leadership program. And she sent me her resume for a review. And I reviewed it a while back. And I made a mental note that I really liked her background as it related to some of the things that I do. So I'd reached out to her one day and said, hey, would you be interested in talking about you know, possibly coming and working with me at, at, at Mile Walk and me and Kara? And she said yes. So you never know what can happen. You got to put yourself out there. So I, uh, you know, give her give her a big shout out. I'm guessing she's probably somewhere in the chat, but say say hi to her. Uh, I don't think she has the blue wrench. Uh, Kara's got the blue wrench, but but Stacy is every bit as part of the team. So ho hopefully you embrace her. And a couple of quick announcements: If you have not signed up for the coaching tomorrow on my first 90 days, I'm giving you the 12 steps, and it doesn't really matter if you're in a new job. But or if you're looking for a new job, you're in a new job, or you've been in your job for a while, which basically covers all of you, 
you should come tomorrow because I'm going to give you 12 steps to crushing it. And I mean, it's you can. it doesn't matter if you've been there three years. You can start these right now. You will not be doing these. I guarantee you. I guarantee you what I'm going to tell you tomorrow, it, it, it will be enlightening. And, um, and the other thing is, as part of this little special that we're doing this weekend, now through the weekend, uh, I have a special on my leadership monthly live coaching. If you in well, you can enroll for forty nine dollars a month. You try it out. You get like ten. I got backlog of ten awesome lessons. Uh, you also get the career accelerator program. Uh, if you enroll in the annual uh, option, which is is much cheap, it's a, a bigger one time upfront payment. Or I should say subscription payment, but it's uh, it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. You will also get my goal setting masterclass. You will be totally positioned for 2020 to crush it, and um, and and it, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. So 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 check that out. Maybe Kara can drop that in the chat. I would like to go to questions. Jason Garrity, where's my boot camper hashtag? Put your oh there there there's Natalie Taylor, my boot camper. All right. Let's roll. Uh, Jason had an interview with a startup. It went well up until, oh, I never like that word, buddy. Uh, it went well until the hiring manager told me that being unemployed was a red flag and probably the head of sales will pass, uh, that they have been burned by hiring someone, go through training, then leave a month later. Uh, I stated that this could happen to employed people, not just unemployed people looking for a new job. What would you have said differently? I am not betting on them calling me for a second interview. If they do, I would be surprised. And Jason, I am not joking when I tell you that if anybody would tell me that, I would laugh in their face. Okay, I literally would say to them, just because someone else did that to you, uh, you know, did you ever date a woman who dumped you? Right? Did the next one just dump you? Right? I mean, how, how, how stupid is that? Right? Like, like that would have been my reaction. I would have said it more eloquently, but that's probably how I would have, have said it. And um, I mean, let's be honest, what's going through my head at this moment as those words are coming out of my mouth, I'm talking about if I was in the interview, is that's wholly short-sighted. And I would, like these things, I might have said, I might have said, you know what? It's a red flag that you even think that. Right. That's pro I mean, like something like that would come out of my mouth. And while I don't feel like, um, you know, I, I think that for you to say that to me, then I, I can I can say that back to you. That's actually how I feel. And I want all of you. I know some of you are probably snickering right now. Like, Andy, well, it's easy for you to say nothing's easy for me to say. Doing this job is not easy. Right? Building this business is not easy. I'm telling you this because I care about you. And I think you all who are spending your time with me, who've carved out time, any moments of your day to come to my show, you need help. But I also want you to know that you deserve it. You deserve a great job. You deserve to work for an employer who loves you, who's got an open mind that embraces and focuses on you. And, and does not let, you know, I have my, for those of you that follow my daily lines, I had a today's line to live by that we circulated, I don't know, maybe a few days ago or last week. And I, I, I said, the quote was, you know, do you let your experiences inform you or confine you? And that to me is somebody letting their experiences confine their thinking, right? It, what was it about the person who left could they look at themselves, reflect on the experience? Could they have interviewed better? Could they have asked better questions? Could they have had a better indication that that person would have been a better long-term fit, right? So, so Jason, you know I love you. You're a boot camper. I care about you. That's how I think. And I think you can figure out some polite way uh, if you're concerned about, you know, kind of snapping back like that. But the fact of the matter is that that's the truth. It is. It is. All right, Natalie Taylor. Hey, I'm a boot camper from PA. Varun, how are you? Uh, Varun asks, I have been using your boss hunting in seven uh, sentence, I'm assuming he means cover letters. However, I would like to know what would be a good subject heading to capture the reader's attention. Uh, two of two. Also, uh, you have a uh, deer, and I am noticing the lingo between used as hello. What are your thoughts? Oh, um, okay, two, two, two questions. 
on the subject line. The subject line is going to be dependent on so many factors. Are you going in totally cold? Is there a warm lead? Is it a referral? Is there a position open? Is there not? And all that stuff. I don't want to go through every permutation of how I would cite every subject line depending on all the conditions that I, and there are not just one singular conditions, there are combinations of conditions. All I want to tell you is don't sweat the subject line. Really, the only thing you need to not do is don't do something cheeky like, you know, a must open email, uh, a must have on your team person inside this email. Don't do anything like that. Just say something casual, something professional. Um, you know, reaching out about being on your team, uh, reaching out about uh, working at your organization. Anything is okay. You, you, you do not. So there, I always say this: there is a huge difference between me and uh, the the fact that email and communicating with you and building a relationship with you over time and then potentially in, in introducing different products and services to you we the slang is email marketing but basically because of the way these emails are sent and because of the volume of emails we send and the number of people and where we send them and all that stuff yes there are tricks and things that we need to make sure we avoid or, or I said should say trip wires that we need to avoid and all that good stuff and there needs to be congruence between the subject line this is for anybody me and you included congruence between what's in the subject line and what's in the body of the email that's all you need to worry about they will open your email the likelihood that they open a singular email from an individual like you who's sending it from a, a gmail address or something like that is very high over 80 percent it is it is and if you if you are wondering uh, whether I speak the truth uh, you should use a tool like read notify look it up you can tag your emails you can see if they open them and then you as somebody who's in the ultimate marketing job right you got to market yourself and then sell yourself and then do the service uh, you you can you can track see like well I send this subject line to these people it, they're opening it. Great, use that one, right? They're not opening it. Look to make sure you understand, are you sending it to the right person? Well, hey, oh, I use this subject line, but I sent it to the CEO of Disney. Okay, well, that's not a, that's not a good correlation, right? The CEO of Disney is not going to open up your email. His admin or executive assistant or law, lawyer or somebody will, but not him or her, people in those positions. And uh, just use something professional. Dear hiring team, uh, dear Andy, hi Andy, hello Andy, I, any of those work. Natalie Taylor, my boot camper. By the way, can I say something? Uh, you, one of the things, one of the things that I really want to get are boot camper T-shirts that say "Pound Boot Camper" on them. So for all the boot campers. <laughs> That was on my list. I asked Stacy to, to check these out. All right, just so you know. All right. After an interview, separate from the thank you, should I mention that their benefits do not list vacation time? Is it better to hold up? Do not email any of this. Do not ask any of this at all, ever, until the very end. Then you go through it line by line. You talk to the HR person. You ask about the vacation policy. The reason that the benefits do not list vacation time is probably because the vacation time varies depending on position and they have one standard protocol. Don't ask any of those things ever, not anywhere in the process until the end. If they offer them up, that's great. You can ask some clarifying questions along the way, but don't, don't ask unless they bring it up. Natalie Taylor got another one here. I just heard from the company before I could get a thank you out to them. They want a second interview. Awesome. How should I approach the thank you notes since they are advancing me? Any changes to the email copy? Yes. Okay. So you should make it a goal to never get their response before your thank you hits. Now, that's okay if you leave the place and you're on the train heading home or you got to get on a flight or whatever and the recruiter calls you or emails you and says, oh my God, Natalie, they love you so much. I just want to let you know and we want you to come back. That's okay. 
But I still want you to stay within that 24 hour window, right? So like if you leave at five o'clock that day from the interview, by five the next day, make sure the thank you email is there. Your thank you copy in that case can say, you know, same template, thank you so much, I feel I'll be a great candidate, I want you to know I am so excited, blah, 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 same thing, and then when you get to that last, right, that last paragraph, just say, and I'm really looking, I heard from so-and-so, and and I'm really looking forward to the next steps, or next interview, or I'll see you next week, or whatever, okay, so you can just tack it on at the end. All right, Evelyn O, hey, Tony P, great to meet you, and give you a hug, buddy, great to... Great to have the cocktails with you. Just a super dude. Velbona. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with your name, but I really like that you're here, and I absolutely love the four hearts that you put next to your name. Hi, Andrew. Got through third interview for a manager position waiting for an offer. Good for you. Can we all give Velbona a big shout out and a live office hours high five and fingers crossed or whatever we do? Uh, I am, if I am too expensive for this department, should I apply for another open position within the same company? Love your passion and knowledge. I have watched all your, oh my God, and can't get enough. Looking forward to some leadership advice videos. Well, thank you. That's a lot of hours. That's like thousands of hours of videos that are out there that I've put out there. Uh, so uh, a so couple, couple things. First thing is, if you love this position, then I would say, all right. I would first. I would negotiate and counteroffer and see if they can raise it to a to a level that is palatable for you, uh, or or maybe there's a bonus. I don't know what your structure is. I don't know what level you are. I don't know how you get paid. Um, there might be a sign-on bonus. There might be a back-end bonus, like an annual bonus at the year end. There might be quarterly bonuses. There might be ways that they could give you stock or other things. But regardless of what those are. You want to make sure that you are counter-offering. Now, if they don't get to the place that you need them to, there's going to be a reason that they can't get there. Either they don't have any money, enough more, or like they value what you do, they appreciate it, they just don't have the money. I always think that there is money. Perhaps they don't value what you're going to do for that amount of money that you want, in which case you need to ask or look to work with them to see if there's a way to augment your role. If your role can be expanded, they might be able to pay more. So there may be some variables. There may not be. I'm not sure what the position, you know, I know it's a manager position, but I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, But that's what I would do. And then if you do not meet the compensation requirements, then what I would do is I would not just apply to something else. I would never reapply to that company through an applicant tracking system because they're going to see your app. They're going to recognize it. There's going to be notes in the system that say you passed because of money. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you talk to the hiring official who you are rejecting and the recruiter or HR person who you are rejecting and say to them, look, I absolutely love your, you and your company. It's just the, the gap is, is too big. It's just too big. So, but I would, I would love to be considered for any other possibilities and please call me if you you feel there are others that are that I fit where the compensation is more in alignment with my expectations uh, and if you ever reach back to the company you should not go through the applicant tracking system you should actually uh, contact the recruiter or contact the HR person and say hey I noticed that there was this position because you don't you don't want to get engaged again if they if they say well you know this one pays less than the last one so you're not going to want to do that so you just want to be careful. You want to be careful there. That's how it handles. Hey, Stacy Gilmore from Louisiana is in the house. Everybody, give Stacy a big, a big Mile Walk Academy welcome to the official team. Brooke Sachs, my boot camper from Michigan. How are you, Anon? Hey. Uh, let's see. I think this is a question. Make sure to put question marks in front of your questions. Uh, I lowballed my minimum required salary as I was pressured during the phone interview to ensure that I proceed to the next in-person interview. Good. Good, good. Any recourse? Of course. You go through the interview process. You crush it. You negotiate at the end. They say, well, you said you wanted 50. Now you're saying you want 60. Say, yeah, well, I know a lot more now, right? And I'm, I'm awesome at this. And you know, I showed you the value I'm going to bring because I'm going to be able to do this, that, and the other thing. 
and now I know what it is that exactly that you want me to do, and I want 60, right? That's, you know, hey, your healthcare costs are higher than my last company, and, you know, and I didn't recognize that when I, whatever. I mean, you got umpteen things that you can, you can pull in to that conversation. Say hi to the Blue Wrench baby Kara. Metal Monkey Videos, my boot camper. Two Crash, how are you? Hanyin, my boot camper. Deborah Sari, our beloved boot camper who runs our WhatsApp uh, group. Frank Sewell, boot camper. Give me your hashtag. Amir, boot camper. Look at this, guys. Oh, my God. Darius, how are you? Imad, Craig Cunningham, hey, Tan. Maybe, is that Tan Vancouver from Vancouver? The currents sometimes help. You got that right. Brian Lovelady. You made it live. All right. Thank you for all your wonderful engagement on the channel. Mm. Cecilia, my boot camper. Hi from London. When I ask what is the first thing I could do to make your life easier in interviews, they always say it's a really good question. You're the best, Annie. Thank you, Cecilia. And all of you, um, not just for the boot campers, but I have a video out there on my, my top five questions asked in a job interview. Check that out. Get the interview intervention book. There's 39 great questions in there. Sherry, our newest boot camp, one of our newest boot campers, Kelly Kennedy. Florida was fun, Kelly. I really wish you'd have made the trip down there from Virginia Beach, my boot camper. And my mom is here. Hey, mom. Looking forward to seeing you Saturday. Mom, I got the jeans on, the one you, you always uh, patch up. I, I'm, I'm wearing my patched up jeans. Like, And when I say patched up, I mean they're like hanging by patches. And I bent down to pick up one of the dogs and I ripped the jeans again, mom. So we got another patch. <laughs> I love it. All right, Inger Giles. Hey, good to see you. And another boot camper. Happy, have a happy goal achievement today. I, I will. All right, Grace from St. Vincent. Hey, Andy, got an interview using your cover letter and resume building tips, but the interview did not go great. That's all right. Get in there, watch my, my webinar, my free webinar, Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview. It's free, it's recorded. Grab it. Great to have you all. Patrick Kelly's a boot camper. I have started the boot camp. Oh, have not started yet. I'm lag. You are not lagging. You just haven't started. It will be. Stacy Gilmore. Yep, that's me. Yep. Yeah, a lot of you probably know Stacy. Just zipping through. This is awesome. You guys are. Rochelle Alves, how are you? Rochelle, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I I come out to to Southern Cal uh, because I have family out there. The Energizer Bunny leader, yeah. I sent one. Uh, I sent an Energizer buddy, uh, Bunny. So that leadership monthly live program that I mentioned. That's we got the special, and you get the career accelerator and the goal setting masks and all. One of the sessions that we did was how to maintain, how I maintain the highest level of energy throughout the day. How I really, I rarely, almost never get tired. And uh, it's, uh, and then I think when I was telling the leaders what was coming, I think I had a GIF in there of the Energizer buddy. MTO, how are you? Boot camper from New York. Poonam, hey. Oop. Hand slip. Dang. Wait, I missed this piece. Please clarify. So we do not apply to an open position. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, Poonam, maybe what you're asking me here, uh, you said, so we do not apply to an open position. My recommendation, sorry for the lighting, folks. There we go. Uh, my recommendation is never to submit your resume in an applicant tracking system. That's all. Check the job search challenge video. It's about a half an hour maybe 35 minutes, something like that. It's really, it'll be really good for you. So uh, Poonam's asking one more thing. We are doing three companies, find three contacts in each company and send three messages to each contact. No. Um, so the, 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 the challenge that I have for people who are job searching, what I recommend so that you are doing a manageable number of things, your focal points are myopic in a good way, right? You don't have like 80 things you're doing. Research organizations target three every day. Then find one person in each company that you can target. It could be a boss. It could be a potential team member. It could be a recruiter, a human resource. I don't really care. 
I don't really, makes no difference. And then I want you to send one message toward each of the three people. So that's some thoughtful message directly to them. And there's a variety of messages that you would want to send depending on who you're sending it to and what you're asking of them. And it's also it also counts if you're sending your message to someone to introduce you to someone. So if, if you're trying to reach Kara at Mile Walk and you got a friend you know down the block that knows her, then sending the message to your friend to say, can you introduce me to Kara? I want to contact her because that counts. The point is to stay focused, stay in motion, and keep working on the activities that have the highest probability of you finding your next job. Now that changes depending on your demographic and some other things, but that's the challenge. And it doesn't matter who you are. If you're a new college graduate, you've never worked a full-time job before, or you're 75 years old looking for a job. It makes no difference, and everybody in between. All right. Um, uh, Liviu, it says, Hi, Andy, is the technique viable for people with little experience as opposed to applying on a company website? If you have little experience, you need to make sure that you are finding organizations that are open to hiring people without the requisite experience. You will be better served either doing the challenge that I just described or, or applying to positions that basically say no experience required because there are some right for some people say new college graduates welcome uh, no no you know no hands on experience necessary as long as you have these foundational traits they'll do that that those are the ones that you you should hang on to or uh, target so tan if you are asking about our LinkedIn group the the LinkedIn so the Mile Walk Academy. Uh, so my my company my company our training company is uh, we do have a LinkedIn group but it's a private group and you need to have paid for something in order to get access to that group. Now you can spend a bunch of money on the boot camp and get in that group, or you can buy. I don't have the book; it's over on the shelf. If you grab the free interview intervention book package where you get the interview intervention book, the ebook, the audio book, and then another ebook. If you pay the $7 for materials and handling fee, so I put it in the envelope, have the guys pick it, we have a picking cost, and so on, and then I basically pay for the shipping, uh, whether you're in the U.S. or whether you're international. If you pay the 7 bucks, we let you get in the group. So it's a sweet, it's a sweet deal. Kyle Williams, question here. Once you have an on-site interview, who do you follow up with and how often? I'm thinking I should reach out to HR and the hiring manager once per week. Maybe that's too much. I would not do that. Everything is going to be dependent on your situation. So I, I, I can't give you a hard and fast rule. You interview. At the end of every interview, the thing you need to be doing is, what's the next step and when will you contact me? When can I expect to hear from you? And then everything that you do is based off the answer to that question. If you don't ask that question, then you don't know when to reach back to them and you don't know what's bugging them or what's being too lax. So you want to ask them. If the recruiter says, I'm not sure, say, okay. If I don't hear from you, I'll touch base in a week. Fine. If they say, we'll get back to you tomorrow and they don't, you wait a day. If they say, we'll get back to you in two days, you wait two more days. Right. If they say we'll get back to you in a week, you wait ten days. So it 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 all depends. And I would not send them emails every week. Um, that's probably the fastest way to get bounced. So hope that helps. Yes, register first ninety days. Twelve steps and things you need to do. Twelve, no less, no more. Hey Lee, my boot camper. I have an executive from a company. I had an executive from a company reach out to me. Had a, a great phone interview. Yay! But he is not hiring until the end of January, February. Best way to stay in touch. Yes. So it's now December what twelfth. So you've got six weeks. So what I like to do is I like to kind of bifurcate these days, 
and I think about what does that six weeks look like. So, what would you do? All right, well, I don't, you know, you're in the U.S., the company's in the U.S., you know, we got the holidays coming around, and regardless of whether somebody celebrates Christmas or not, companies close up for a couple days, right? To celebrate New Year's and so on, right? Doesn't really matter. So, in a couple weeks, it's going to be Christmas time. You want to you wanna maybe wait in between Christmas and New Year to say, I hope you had a nice holiday and I'm wishing you a good New Year. I'll follow up in a couple weeks after the new New Year. New Year's falls in the middle of the week this th- th- in 2020. Maybe you catch up the first week of the following, you know, the following week, like the sixth or something like that. So that's what I would do. And then you can use the holidays as an excuse to contact somebody and just say, hey, check it in. I'm here and available. Hey, I want you to know that I know this is the holiday week, but I'm a, I'm a, around and available. You want to have, you know, a chat on the phone or coffee or whatever. Like, like just that kind of stuff. It works. It really works. That's, that's the best way to do it. Imad, question. Hi, Andy. I'm struggling to build a professional profile because I have a decade of experience in three different industries and I'm trying to break into management and consulting. Imad, what you didn't tell me is what do you do? So uh, if I'm a project manager and I work in healthcare, financial services, and manufacturing, you're just a project manager. Nothing wrong with that. Now you got three different industries where you know how to manage projects. I th- I call that a home run, right? Like, so if you know, I, I don't know what you do, and 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 um, and I would say that you need to look at the common thread. So a couple things you need to look at the common thread. So you know, were you a database architect in three different industries? Did you sell, you know, consumer product goods, healthcare devices, or whatever? You know, do you have a common function? If you have a common function, that's your meal ticket. Okay, that's the thing you leverage. That's your story. That's what you advertise. So, so, so focus on that. And if you if you want to break into management consulting, then you uh, the first thing is you need to make sure you understand what management consulting is, what goes along with it. And I'm not just talking about what management consultants do, but there's a lifestyle um, that could be great or it could be miserable. You know, I mean, all of that good stuff. So, um, it's. You know, I, I would be talking with people in the consulting arenas, and if you have three different industries, none of which are in the consulting sector, then you need to talk with consulting companies who are open to hiring people from industry. There are some companies will have a total stigma. You will not be able to break into uh, consulting. I will tell you this. You know how Andy's always open-minded and always willing to give people a chance and all that good stuff? Okay, one of the things that I will tell you from experience, this is decades talking, okay, and working in the consulting industry and being a recruiter and all that other good stuff, is consulting firms, they should not be taking a chance on people from industry unless, unless you have incredibly strong subject matter expertise for something they are consulting for. Because to be a consultant requires a dozen more skills than somebody who has subject matter expertise that operates within their own company has. Okay, so you know if if I'm a we had a we had a a a a consulting client of ours for from a recruitment standpoint, we uh, placed at their organization lots of people across different positions, and they were a consulting firm for technology. Half of their business is in the healthcare space. They would hire former nurses, as an example, as an extreme example, to counsel them on their solutions and so forth. They would go on with the teams and all that good stuff. That's an example of what I mean by strong expertise. The one thing that I would not do as a consulting firm owner is hire somebody who's been working for 10 years who wants to come in at a 10-year consulting experience rate. You would start at the bottom. You would start at the bottom, and you, and that would be the only way you'd be able to come into my company. And then you could work your way up. Okay, that that you are in a that's a unique situation. I would not always say this. Okay, but in this particular case, loads of experience, I would. So make sure that um, 
that you can talk to how you consulted. So if you were a project manager, did you consult internally to whatever? Did you optimize the designs of whatever if you want to do management consulting? So th- just 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 think about that and consider it. It's important. All right. The cash. How do uh, hi Andy, how do I avoid uh, how do how to avoid procrastination? While searching uh, for a job change, at times I know I'm procrastinating, but somehow I just keep doing it. But gosh, the best way to not procrastinate is to take my job search challenge. No joke, because you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. There's my goal. Three a day, three a day, three a day. Next day, three a day, three a day, three a day. It's the best way. Michael Avery, hey. Good morning to you from Denver. Scarlett Davidson. Yesterday, I received a verbal offer with a start date March 9th from the hiring manager. Not an offer letter. Inquired with HR. Depends on background checks. HR start date mid to late March. Help. I have absolutely no idea why they would be hiring you and not letting you start on, for three months. That's literally three months, almost to the day, right? So the way I would go about this is you can sign that if you're comfortable with it, and I would keep looking. Here's the rule, people. Decades of experience talking now from recruitment standpoint. The further away your start date is from today, the greater the likelihood you don't show up for the job, whether that was your choice or whether that was their choice. They found somebody different. They found somebody better. Oh, three months. I changed my mind. January rolled around. We don't have the budget for that position. Oh, wait. We're going to delay that position until April. Up, project's behind. Up, something came up. Up, somebody quit. Now this is a bigger priority. Like, there it goes on and on and on. So, what you need to say is, okay, look, this is pretty silly. Uh, I'm not waiting until March. Now, you maybe you could wait till March. Maybe you have a great job as it is. I don't know that, but depending on your position. If it was me and I was, you are obviously job searching, whether you are employed or not, I, I and you like this, com- all these conditions, right? And you like the company, sign it, say fine, see you in March. And trust me when I'm telling you, they're thinking it's 50-50 at best. And then I would keep looking. And then what I would do is if I got an offer that says, we want you to start December 16th. I would go back to that company and say, hey, I really, I like you better. You want to move it up? Otherwise, I'm going. That's it. That's it. That's what I would do. Dave Wong, my boot camper, how you doing? William Spillman, how you doing, my boot camper? Two crash. Glenn Bennett, it's a, kind of a new name to me. So, Glenn is asking, Andy, do you have any advice regarding a lack of professional references for my resume? So Glenn, so you don't, I don't know if this is what exactly what you were asking me. Number one, you do not need to put references on your resume. And as a matter of fact, none of you should. Everybody knows that they can ask you for those should they want to review them. And a lot of employers don't even check them. Some check one or two. Everybody's got a different viewpoint on this. Really, it's a mixed it's a mixed bag. You do not need to put them on your resume because that's just going to take up real estate on your resume that you don't need to take up. Now, not having references is a different problem. I can't manufacture them for you, but what you could do is you could consider alternate like it doesn't have to be just the boss. Right? It could be a peer it could be a staff member. It could be a customer. It could be an internal customer. It could be an external customer. It could be an alliance partner. It could be. There are people that could speak on your behalf. Here again, I don't know what your function is, but uh, but that that's the way I would go about that. I would not not worry about that until you and then you just speak to. Hey, these are the references that I have. Marie Astrid Gonzalez. Hi, Andy. I've been sending out emails, but I'm struggling with how, what to say next to follow up when they don't respond. Great question. Uh, Kara, give me a mark at 1159 on this one. So, uh, so Marie, 
All right, sending emails and not getting responses, what should you do? So if you find yourself where you're sending something as it relates to your job search or your networking or whatever, there's a couple of different concepts that you need to keep in mind when you want to follow up. Number one, first concept, you got to give them some time to actually respond. What's an appropriate amount of time to give them before you should respond? Seven days. Why? Well, somebody could be sick, somebody could be on vacation, somebody could be traveling, somebody could be strolling around the world, who knows? Okay, maybe they've got a huge deadline. Seven days, to me, that's calendar days, is an appropriate amount of time for you not to be a pest. Okay, that's reasonable. That's you being diligent, not pesty. I have people, kid you not, email me one day, ask me a bunch of stuff, then email me the next day and say, well, how come you haven't answered or did you get my email? These are not paying members of any of our programs or whatever. They want me to review their CV, resume, cover letter, whatever. Questions about their interviews. What should I say? What should I not? It's, it's your priority. It's not their priority. So first thing is give them a little time. Wait seven days. Second thing you need to keep in mind about a follow-up when you are reaching out to somebody, especially if you don't know the person. If you know the person, you have a little bit more at your disposal, you could be a little bit more casual, you can gauge whether this is a friend, maybe somebody you lost touch with. But I'm talking about you wanna send something to someone cold. You do that, when you follow up, it's important that you say as little as possible. So second thing is, no new information. If they have not responded to your package that was this long, do not pile on and give them more things to consider. So you don't need to struggle with what to say. I'm going to tell you, all you need to say is you forward what you sent them originally and then you say, hey, I just wanted to check back in on this. I sent you a message last week. I'm wondering if you're interested in talking, interested in engaging, interested in whatever. That's it. That's it. The purpose of a follow-up is to give them a friendly tap on the shoulder. It is never, ever to give them more information. And if you missed something in your first email, do not add anything. Nothing. Get them to respond. And they're going to respond by having the least amount to review, especially in that second email. So that's all. No need to struggle. You resend it. Just following up again, sent this, you know, sent this message this week, just want to follow up, wanted to see if you were interested in connecting or whatever it is. As few words as possible. Hope that helps you, Marie. All right. Uh, I don't know if it's Kari or Kari. Maybe you can help me with the pronunciation. I have friends who pronounce it one of each, actually. Uh, Andy, it, uh, is it true Employers view self-employed same as unemployed. No. Uh, How do you address that when I'm self-employed? It's not a gap. And Kari or Kari, uh, best way to do that is to watch my video on how to go from being a contractor or self-employed to full-time. You are welcome. All right. Hanyin, my boot camper, how you doing? All right. Hanya, nobody knows everything but is competent enough to look up the answer. I bomb in one of six on-site interviews because it's either you know or you don't. Any suggestion what I should do? I uh, I have a feeling. Okay, so Han, Han, well, I, or Hanyan, I, I don't, uh, obviously I'm not sitting there with you and I can't observe what's transpiring. But it's rare that if you bomb, it's rare that somebody crushes five and bombs one. And if you totally bomb one, you have to you have to look at the scope of that interview. So it, is it a situation where you know you're kind of more of a senior guy and they give you a technical, lower level, detailed, whatever it is, more technical, and I'm using it in in quotes, uh, kind of review that you didn't do well in. That's one thing. Uh, it's uh, without without knowing exactly what it is that you're bombing, my first question would be, I'm wondering if you're truly bombing or if that's actually your assessment where maybe you didn't get along with somebody or maybe they weren't as warm and receptive. But 
I, I find it hard to believe that you go five for six often. Now, if there's a situation where you happen to go five for six, if there's more detail that you want to give me on that, I'll do, a, I'll do my best to try to give you more insight. But that's very difficult to assess. It really is. Varun, uh, glad to finally be able to use the line. Long time listener, first time live office hours attending. Great to have you. Tiago, how you doing? Thanks for the engagement on LinkedIn, my friend. The introduction left me thinking about passive income. Uh, that's funny. I'm not sure how that is. I actually, uh, not that you were asking a question, I don't believe in passive income. I don't think there's anything passive about anything. The only passive income I know of is like when you, you, know, you buy a building and you're renting it out and you, know, you, you hang on to it long enough to where they pay off the mortgage. Michael Avery, I used the boss, uh, my boot camper, I used the boss hunting letter, interested in supporting your company, awesome, to respond to an open PM position and had a phone interview Tuesday. Build rapport and learn about his pain points. Michael Avery, thank you. Thank you for answering the umpteen questions that we get about what's the subject line that we should use. Interested in supporting you and your company, interested in supporting your company, interested in supporting your team, pick. Any of them are good. Any of them. That's awesome, buddy. The cash. Hi, Andy. How do you avoid? Oh, I think I, think I saw this like three times. <laughs> Kara, you know, I, I don't have any slacks from you. What's the, uh, is everything like good or uh, 203, 203 of you. You guys are awesome. I, I actually, I don't know the numbers. I actually, just so you know, I hide the numbers. I don't pay any attention to that because I don't care if there's just one person here with me because if it's just you and me, we're gonna have a great, we're gonna have a great one-on-one session. Uh, but that's that's awesome. Thank you guys for coming and spending so much time with me. Um, Han Yin, in my thank you letter, I append all the answers I missed. Not sure if that is helpful or sounds desperate. Han Yin, I would not recommend that. I would not recommend that. I have no problem with this. The thank you letter, for those of you who are not familiar with the Andy Lasavita thank you template, get the interview intervention book. It's free. Um, there's three pieces to it. Thank you for your time in a little eloquence. The middle piece, the last piece is, and I'm so excited and so forth. The middle piece is the money paragraph where you talk about how you're a strong fit. If you would like to, answer something that was not discussed you get to pick one thing and you put it in that middle paragraph and you say something like you know one thing that that uh, came to mind that i didn't have an opportunity to share that i think is is important for you to know or is germane or will help me or position me effectively to it to uh succeed in this position is I worked on this project where we did this very thing, blah, blah, blah. That's it, tight, middle, and you get to add something that you missed. Okay, but I would not, I would not, um, I would not, I would not, I would stick to tight. If your thank you email is longer than this, it's too long. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind. Michael Avery, I got my thank you email before I got home, and I also found. Can I? I want to. I know you guys didn't ask me this, uh, but Michael, you know what? That that's a dude. You're rolling today. I I um I, I want to make a comment about this thank you because it's coming up a few times. Where Natalie, I think, said Natalie Taylor said, "Hey, I got I got the, I got the thank you before I got I got the response before I got to thank them." There are two things that are really important about thanking somebody: speed and thoughtfulness. Okay, and if you watch my thank you videos, I beat on this because it's important. You wanna give them a thank you email within 24 hours from the time you leave or the time you hang up or the time you shut the Skype or whatever. That's speed, okay? That is speed, that's enough. And thoughtfulness, the kind of the three little paragraphs that I recommend. If, if you, lead, like we, we would have occasionally 
uh, some job candidates have a brain fart and they would like go leave the interview, even though I told them then go home and type the email and they would get on the train and they would grab their phone and they would say, oh, you know, thank you so much. Had a great time. Looking forward to next steps. Super excited. Sent from my iPhone. And while that's fast, that's not thoughtful. So I'd rather you take the long train ride home or the flight or the whatever, you, the commute, you get home, you sit down, you write it out, okay? Because that's important. And if they beat you to it, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hopefully they're not beating you to the fact that you got rejected. But I want, I want you to keep that in mind, speed and, speed and thoughtfulness. Oh yeah, I got my, I got my, got my tree today. Well, one of them got the bigger tree on that side and the biggest tree is in that room. <laughs> All right. Bill Young, hey to you. Rochelle, again, hey to you. Parker's asking, hi, Andy. I, I was wondering if you had feedback with regards to your advice and coaching from someone, I'm assuming you mean in the UK, Parker, I've coached people in 50 countries. It doesn't matter where you live. Uh, it, it really doesn't. So if you are interested in coaching, or we get we get a we get a question like, you know, does the job search boot camp work for people on different continents other than you know the, the North America and the U.S.? We have over 80 countries represented in the boot camp. It's highly successful. You're you're, you're not coming up with anything so unique. There may be little adaptations that you need to make. I'll help you with those. Okay, so it's not it's not a it's not a big deal. And you know, I was on a coaching session the other day. Somebody from Brazil, somebody from Germany, somebody from the UK. In fact, and I have one today. I'm not sure where he's from. I had one yesterday. She's in Florida. But you, you know, it's it it's. I'm not sure if that's what you're asking. If 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 my coaching works, it does. All right. Bill Young, great response. When thinking about the person who had a period of unemployment, I actually just set up my own consulting. It's a great thing to do. And if you got a little consulting gig, even if it's a little part-time, that's cool too. Hanyin, my role was augmented in my last career and I do more, but the extra I did was never compensated. I guess what you say only works before you start with the firm. I, I, don't, I don't buy that. I, 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 I don't. Brent Asher, uh, I had two phone interviews with a company and had an in-person interview schedule, I'm assuming scheduled, then the company withdrew the in-person interview. I never had this happen before. What could give? Brent, it could be anything. Um, so, so I know this is difficult for a lot of us to, to wrap our minds around because we, me, you, everybody, has never had an experience that we were not at the absolute center of, right? Our universe revolves around us. And while we might not be that narcissistic, and selfish, what we tend not to be able to immediately think is what could be going on in their lives. Now, in this situation, I would appreciate it if the company would say, Brett, uh, we decided we're not going to go forward with the interview because we found somebody else. Or upon further consideration, we took a closer look at your credentials and the hiring official really wants somebody with a little more of this or something like that. Or if they found somebody, hey, we found somebody else. Hey, we put the position on hold. It could, by the way, it could be umpteen different things for why they did that. I would not take it to heart. I would not feel bruised. I know it, I know it's sad because you're looking forward to it. But back to the Iron Man talk, right? You put yourself out there. You made yourself vulnerable. Grow from it. Learn from it. If, if you can get some insight, just say, hey, I appreciate, I appreciate all the time you did spend with me. And while I thought I was a great, you know, fit for the job, if you've moved on, one thing you could do, Brent, and I don't want to get too into this, but if you have not seen the video on how to get the job after being rejected, I would highly recommend that you watch that. And perhaps, perhaps uh, you can use some of that even though you had the phone interview. Uh, it, you did have an interview, so you might be able to apply some of that. And I think that that might be a nice way to go. Natalie, you're welcome. Uzoma, how you doing? Thank you, my friend. 
for the shout out on LinkedIn. Uh, I, by the way, Uzoma, I hope you're still here to hear this. Uh, those lists are nice. They're, uh, I don't put any stock in them. And, the, you know, they're one person's view and they're totally myopic. And they, they, they don't mean anything to me. What means the most to me is you. You showing up, you engaging with me. And I don't really care about any of those things, but I appreciate you tacking my name on. That was awesome. Thank you. I will never forget that. <laughs> Folks, here's another thing. Everything that you do, every week that you do, every day, all your, you know, I just had an, another thing, another thing about the leadership monthly program, that, that, that thing that I was mentioning about, you know, the first 90 day thing, you get the career accelerator, you get my leadership program. We meet every month. The last session that we just did was on personal branding. It was awesome. For 55 minutes, I gave you the whole formula for basically being awesome brand-wise. And one of those things, just a snippet of one of the components, was the engagement that you have on social media so that it's not just what your profile looks like and all that good stuff. It's actually who you communicate with, how you communicate, who you follow, and what you say is also part of your brand. But what that also does is it gets people to engage with you. It gets you known. Now, uh, you just heard that exchange, and it was almost the only one who's going to know what I was talking about right there. But I guarantee you, if he emailed me about something, I would handle his email differently than I handle all the other emails that come through for people that I just don't know. It doesn't mean that you're not all awesome people too. I'm just saying, like, you get engaged and you start doing things. Don't minimize the impact that your engagement on social media can have. And you do not need to be sitting there all day. You could spend... 15 minutes at the end of your workday before you leave to scroll through your feeds, right? I go through my feeds before I get out of bed. Now, I do it really fast. And if I can do it before I get out of bed, zipping through really fast, you can spend 15 minutes and help your, your own cause doing that. So there's a little side message there, but I, I, want, you to, uh, I want you to know about that. Uh, one other thing I, okay, so I want a couple couple quick announcements. So Stacey Gilmore, give her a shout out. Give her a shout out. Go say hi to her in the LinkedIn group and the Facebook group. You're going to be seeing more and more of her. And we got the first 90 days uh, webcast. It's live. I'm going to be there. I'm talking like this, but it's not on YouTube. Not on YouTube. You got to register for this. It's only on Zoom. Okay? It's only on Zoom. I am running a special on my leadership monthly live uh, through the weekend, it's really strong. It will really help you in 2020. Well, and you get some of the past stuff from 2019, and you can look at the inventory of some of the, the archives. You get the Career Accelerator Program, which is my five-module career development program. You get that no matter what option you enroll in. So whether you pay $49 or whether you pay $297. But if you pay the $297, um, which is equates to like 24 bucks a month, maybe almost 25 then uh, you get my career uh, uh, goal, uh, career setting or sorry goal setting masterclass. That's a five module program on how to get everything you want out of life and have fun doing it. You get that as well through Sunday. And one other thing that I want to mention is next Friday, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, we have a live uh, job search boot camp coaching session. All the boot campers. That Friday will just be the boot campers a week from Friday. It's a great session. We'll talk a little bit about some year-end adjustments I want you to make. Uh, but uh, if you are interested, if you are not in the boot camp and you are interested in getting in the boot camp and you just missed the special that we had that ended a, a, a week or two ago or whatever it was, uh, send us an email at support at milewalk.com and we will, we will take care of you. But if you are interested in the boot camp, it's really a, a, a great program. And then in January and in February, uh, we're going to have more, more coaching sessions. But we have one on Friday. And it's a great way to get a lot of your questions answered live because I do, I do try to answer all of them. So I hope that helps. All right, let me see if I can spend a few more minutes, get a few more of these. But Uzoma, thank you again. Let me get back to. All right. 
Oh, yeah, you know what? I Thank you, Kara. I, so, Ollie, I totally forget to ask you. <laughs> Share this. Click the thumbs up button. Subscribe. That's another thing. I, uh, I answer my YouTube channels, uh, sorry, my YouTube channel comments every day. Uh, I answer uh, questions in the Mile Walk Academy for the paying members. And I answer questions on my blog. And I answer questions in, on my YouTube channel. And I prioritize them based on who's subscribed to the channel. And I, I try to get through through the subscribers' comments. I can't always even get through the subscribers' comments. But if you're not even subscribed, I rarely get to your to respond to you. So just keep that in mind. But I hope you do. I hope you subscribe. Stacy from Rochester, thank you for that. Joe Mobley. Uh, I did exactly what Andrew described with salary because I learned that the responsibilities of the role being the face of a huge consultancy to a major client were a much higher than the lower salary. True, good. Jen C, hey, Jim Chastain. Uh, Jim's about to get an offer. Let's give Jim a big congrats. Good good for you, buddy. About worried I'm going to leave money on the table in negotiations. Should I counter only once or twice? Jim, if anybody ever countered on me twice, I would I would rescind the offer. Okay. You you want to shoot for an iteration. So I'm an I'm an employer. I'm gonna present an offer to you. If you want to go off and you want to think about it. If you want to think about it and get back to me, great. Give me the data. I'm going to look at it. And then I'm going to say yes or no. Okay. Or or you might say, Andy, I want 10,000 more. I might say, Jim, I'm going to give you five. If you say, Andy, no, nope, can you go 7,500? That's going to irritate me. Okay. Because if I'm giving you my counter on something as tight as that, I don't want to mess around. If, however, it's a very complicated structure, like Jim, here's your salary. Jim, here's your sign-on bonus. Jim, this is the uh, monthly commissions. This is the quarterly MBO bonus. Here's the year-end corporate annual bonus. Here's your restricted stock units. Here's your spiffs. Here's your, okay, you got all this stuff you're trying to monkey about with. If it's complicated like that, then, then it's okay to iterate again, okay? But I, I, I feel it's more of an iterate. So if, if you come back to me and you say, I want 10 more on the base, I want 20, 20 more on the sign-on bonus, I want the commissions to go from 2% to 3%, and so on and so forth. Now I've got to look at all this. Now there's a number of things that we can do to move this up and move that down and all that good stuff. You do not want to go around more than one and a half times. So just kind of keep, keep that in mind. But I, I would not be going in thinking I got to counter twice. I need to go in thinking I got to crush this, which I hope you know you did. You said you're about to get an offer. Hopefully, they're going to make a good offer. Hopefully, it's going to be super close. And hopefully, you're going to make one pass. That's what you shoot for. That's the goal. Because that keeps everybody's emotions intact too. Meaning you don't join being sour they don't join feeling like they overpaid you and being miffed and then put a bullseye on the back of your head that you better hurry up and produce. That's how I that's how I look at that. But if you have a simple pay structure like salary or salary and bonus, one shot, one one shot. Vikesh, I'm not sure how many times you put this in the chat there, but I think I got that. Giselle, first time from Munich. Can we all give Giselle a first timer hug? Brandon Kelly, how you doing? How do you know an applicant tracking system is being used for a job? If you are submitting your resume into any kind of system, career portal or whatever, where you are entering your name, you're entering your email, attaching your resume, and it's an applicant tracking system of some sort. Okay, it might be rudimentary, but it is. If you, if the company says, we welcome any and all inquiries. Please email careers at milewalk.com. Then they might or might not be using an applicant tracking system. So it's not always the case that you know, but in that case, they probably aren't using one. But some, some will. Normally when they do, they want you to put your info in the system, and that's, that's why they'd rather not have it in their email box. Let's hope that helps. 
All right, let me see if I can get a few more of these. Maybe try to pick some boot campers here. Uh, uh, Tracy, heard response to question about subject line. I've been using my email from my branded domain. Maybe I should use Gmail or Yahoo. Yes, Tracy, don't use, that is a, that is a phenomenal question. You will be better off using a Gmail email address or whatever your favorite preferred, you know, non-corporate or branded email. Why? Because when you send something to a person inside a company where you would like to work, you do not want them to misconstrue your email as though you are targeting them to sell them something. Okay? So, so Tracy, I would, I would change mto at gmail.com actually go with m tracy over at gmail.com or whatever but like something like that punam you're welcome priyal hey about to start search for leadership executive positions any advice on how to find it easily there is nothing easy about finding the right job